Hello and thank you for watching. My name is John and you're watching Crash Course in my in-class series, Section 4, Constraints. In this video I want to talk about the various constraints, uh, where located and uh, the practical use for them. Uh, constraints are basically uh, like modifiers you can put on components of uh, end cloth. Constraints are uh, found in end constraints. When you uh, push that down, bring the drop down menu, you see transform, component to component, point to surface, slide to surface, weld adjacent borders, force field, attract and mesh, and terrible surface. Terrible surface will be discussed in the next video. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about transforms, component to component, point to surface, weld adjacent, force field, and attract and mesh. So let's get started. In this example, I'm going to be doing a transform. Um, this is basically going to be hanging cloth from a two point on a wall. So here's the wall, here's the two points. Um, so I want to create these as rigid objects, which is right here in the tab. And I want to create this as an end cloth, which is right there. <laughs> so now when I push play, the cloth is going to start to drop. But you can see the cloth is start, uh, trying to get away from the rigid object. <laughs> but since uh, we want these to be closed pin like objects, uh, we're going to add a transform constraint. So we go to vert vertex, select the uh, vertices around the object, and constraint transform. What it's going to do is it's going to create a locator like object and put the vertices in green. And now when you push play, the cloth starts to fold and wrap around the uh, constraint as well as work with the rigid modifier. You can see it kind of folded and flops onto the uh, the pin. The next constraint is called component to component. This basically allows you to weld uh, any type of component of uh, any cloth to uh, any type of component of and rigid. In this case we're going to have this as an end rigid and this is the end cloth. I'm going to create a trampoline like object. <coughs> so we're going to just click on vertex, shift select the object, select that vertex, and constraint, component to component. I'm going to do this for all four sides. There we go. And now when I push play, you can see that it starts to try to uh, stick to the, the edge of the trampoline while given a four point folding motion. Next example will be a point to surface uh, constraint. Uh, practical use would be a cape on someone's back. In this case we're going to have this plane as a cape and this cube as the back. So we're just going to convert the cape to an end cloth and the back to an end rigid. Then we're going to go vertex. Select the vertex as the, uh, vertices that you want. Just shift select the uh, back and constraint. Point to surface. It's going to create your dynamic. Turn your vertices green. And when you push play, it flops there. Now the difference between this one and the, uh, and the previous one is it actually sticks to the surface. In addition, you can actually move the object as you can see and it sticks. Very useful if you want to have this as the back like I said and that as a cape. Next constraint I'll be talking about is uh, well to adjacent borders. This is uh, going to create the seam like effect like in the previous end cloth. Uh, at this current point in time I already I have a seam open. I already have everything set up with uh, these two as cloth and that as an end rigid and the ground as a plane. From here on out I will have everything pre-set up. So when I push play you'll notice that the uh, cloth drops down on the, on the sphere and splits and just separates and lands on the grid. So with uh, attached adjacent borders, 
select the objects, go to sub-object mode, select the vertices, make sure I got them all, and constraint, weld adjacent borders. You have the uh, end dynamic, dynamic constraint uh, created, the, poly, the vertices sorry, are green, and now when I push play, it's going to fall, hit the sphere, but stay together. Now one of the big things to note is if you look very closely on the uh, well, on the uh, the cloth, it actually created a seam. It's a lot more tense, a lot more rigid at the edge to create that seam effect. If you really want to go that route when you're creating your garments, rather useful if you want to get that type of effect. Now the next one is kind of more like a, a troubleshooting, like if your cloth gets stuck together. Um, next one we're talking about is force field constraint. Uh, this is very helpful when uh, your cloth kind of folds in on itself and you're using this as kind of like a, a little push to get it out of, this, out of the mesh. So uh, at this current point in time I only have this cloth and it landing on the grid. So. Uh, the force field constraint can be done on an entire mesh or components. In this case, for example purposes, I'm just going to do a component, which is that section right there. And constraint, force field. <coughs> now when I push play, watch the geometry and watch the edge flow, um, and you'll notice that it just pushes away from the uh, force field like so. But it flattens out on the uh, grid. So, And when I drop this down, push play, It'll be very subtle, but you'll notice that the cloth is pushing up. Very soft, it's pushing up. And like I said previously in a previous video, it's like uh, this is rather helpful when your when your cloth gets stuck inside the geometry, usually like an elbow or a, a hip, um, a shoulder, armpit, jaw section. It's like the troublesome spots where uh, cloth usually works out. That's really helpful. The last example I'll be showing in this video is called a track to matching mesh constraint. Uh, the purpose of this is to have one mesh be drawn to another one. In this scene you'll notice I have two planes, one kind of modified, the other one not. Um, the poly sorry, uh, the plans themselves are actually identical. As a matter of fact, the one on the top is just a duplicate from the bottom and modified. They need to be and have the same, uh, or as best as possible, the same amount of vertices. It's kind of like a blend shape. If it has the uh, incorrect amount of vertices, it might not work. I actually haven't tried. I haven't really thought about it. Practical use for this would be to uh, animate this, like the top mesh, kind of like uh, a cloth your clothes and then have this attract to uh, th this be your uh, cloth attracted to this to uh, kind of follow it. So uh, when I push play you'll notice that the cloth itself just kind of falls down, hits the grid and that's it. But if I select the cloth, select the mesh, attract to match and mesh, you'll notice it kind of looks like it's bleeding or crying or something. And now when I push play it just shoots up to that cloth. This is, uh, as you can see, as I start moving it, very similar to some of the previous ones that you saw. So you'll notice that when I uh, start moving the the turquoise-ish uh, geometry, the blue one tries to fall as fast as possible. So that's basically it for this video. I talked about all the transforms in the constraint section except a couple of them. Next video I want to talk about terrible objects such as uh, ripping cloth, shooting a cannonball, zipper, etc. Uh, etc. Et so thank you very much for watching and have fun.